Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus, as we have gathered together to listen to his word, let us offer ourselves in prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for having brought us into your sacred and holy presence. O oh, Father, every moment spent with you, listening to your word, are moments of fruitfulness in our life. We offer the darkness, the wounds, the pain, the sorrow, the struggles. Let your hand of mercy touch us. Let your word that's filled with mercy bless us. Open our hearts to listen to your word. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. We take a reading from the gospel according to Mark. Chapter 3, verses 31 onwards. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother? and my brothers. And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to your Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, a beautiful statement made by Jesus. Whoever does the will of God is my brother, my sister, my mother. I remember a couple of months ago going to a very famous shrine here in Mumbai of Our Lady of Perpetual Succor in Mahim. And I've, I've gone there when I was a little child I barely could remember it, but my parents used to go there. And this love for the novena and devotion to Our Lady of Perpetual Succor came from the experiences I've had with my parents saying the novena every Wednesday. And they had that faith from going to this church in Mahim. And so it was like nostalgia for me going back to that church, and more so as a priest not to do service, but just to visit there and to be a part of the novena. When I went over there, I got a chance to move around the campus, and that's when I saw on the first floor of a building just next to the church, it was written, Confessions Available. And so I thought to myself, it's an opportune time, it's a perfect environment where I don't know the people there, the people don't know me there. And so I thought it would be a pretty good private environment to go and make my confession. So I went up to the first floor of the building. And there, when I got to the place where people were queued up for the confession, I met the person who was volunteering and in charge of, of maintaining that queue. And immediately seeing me, she recognized me as the director of the Thabo Retreat Center. And so she looked at me and she exclaimed in a pretty audible voice, the director of Thabo is here. And so all the people in the queue as well got to, got to know. Well, that was the end of privacy. She also went and told the priest inside who's listening to the confessions, that the director of Tabor is here. She asked me, she told me I could cut the queue and, and I didn't have to stand in the queue. Well, I continued standing in the queue and I, I waited for my chance. It gave me a good time to prepare. But, but the thought in my mind that struck me was, I was given that position or I was, I was allowed to cut that queue is because of the position I held. And very often in this world, 
we do get acknowledged and accepted based on the positions and statuses we hold. If we want to have an influence, our position and status plays a big hand in getting that influence or getting work done, especially in places, places like India and, and all over the world as well. It's very easy to get our work done by the position and status we hold. And here we see a kind of a similar instance with the mother and brothers and sisters of Jesus who came there to the house where Jesus was. It was crowded, there was barely any place to get in. And obviously someone at the door or someone just outside the door recognized the mother and brothers and sisters of Jesus and so called out and said, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. Because they believed that relationship, that mother-son relationship, that brother relationship is to be given priority. And it's based on, on that relationships that, that maybe they, sh they should be put right up in front and get an opportunity to meet Jesus. But the response of the Lord is, is pretty shocking. And it's actually thought provoking to understand or try and understand why Jesus responded in the way he did. The response of the Lord goes, he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Those who do the will of God, they are my mother, my brother, my sisters. At one side, you have the set of people who thought the mother and brothers and sisters of Jesus are here. That status, that position that they hold and push them right in front, telling Jesus, there are people of priority here. People who are connected to you, people of, of position and status. And the Lord puts them in their place by telling them, the relationship that is there between them and me is not based on, on what position they hold. The relationship is based on the faith they hold. The relationship is based on the faithfulness that they show. Anyone who does the will of God is my mother, my brother, my sisters. That is where Jesus creates the bond. The bond is not based on the position and status. I could be a director. I could be a bishop. I could be a cardinal. I could be the pope. But my relationship with God is based on my faithfulness to God, not on what position I hold, not on how many years I've, I've done ministry for him. And that is why so beautifully and so aptly said by the Lord in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21 onwards, in similar terminologies, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. That is the key. The faithfulness that you show to my Father, the faithfulness that you show to me. And he goes on to say, on that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do many deeds of power in your name? And the Lord would say, I never knew you. The fact that you've, you've done all these things doesn't make a difference to me. The fact that you've been doing ministry for me doesn't make a difference to me. The fact that you go to church every day doesn't make a difference to me. The fact that you call me Lord and Savior doesn't make a difference to me. Are you faithful to me? Are you faithful to me? In the book of Revelation, the Lord has a complaint against us. In the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 2 onwards, he puts it all in perspective when he says, 
I know your works, your toil, your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers, and you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name, and that you have not grown weary. Now, these are all the positive qualities that the Lord has seen. And yet, he says, I'm not pleased. I'm not pleased because my relationship with you is not just based on, on the fact that you cannot tolerate evildoers. It's not based on the fact that you're enduring patiently. But I have this against you, says the Lord in verse 4, that you have abandoned the love that you had at first. The faithful love that you showed to me, you don't seem to have that now. So your position, your status of enduring patiently, your work, your hard work, it doesn't make a difference. You call me Lord, Lord, it doesn't make a difference. And that is why the Lord says, is your heart with me? These people honor me with their lips. Their hearts are far away from me. I cannot bask in the glory of what I did yesterday and the position I hold today. I have to ask myself, do I love the Lord? Am I faithful to the Lord? That is where I boast in my relationship with God. That is my status in connection to Jesus. We read in 2 Samuel about King David a man who is famously noted to have a heart like that of God. He loved God. And in 2 Samuel chapter 6, we read from verse 14 onwards, David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. He was girded with a linen ephod and he danced in front of all the people, nearly naked. He's the king of Israel and his, his wife is so upset, the daughter of Saul, in verse 16 of 2 Samuel chapter 6, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord and she despised him with all her heart. She despised him. She, she called him and she said, how can the king of Israel, how has the king of Israel honored himself today? Verse 20, David returned to bless his household. But Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said how the king of Israel honored himself today, uncovering himself today before the eyes of his servants, as any vulgar fellow might shamelessly uncover himself. She despised him. She couldn't understand that relationship. And that is when David would reply and tell her, I will make myself yet more contemptible than this, and I will be abased in my own eyes, but by the maids of whom you have spoken, by them I shall be held in honor. Why? Because I have been dancing in the presence of my God. What David boasted about was his relationship with God. What she saw was the position he held as the king of Israel. But how he saw it was, for him everything was that relationship with God. When he boasted, he boasted in that relationship. And that is what the Lord said. If it's my mother, it is not that he puts down his blessed mother. But far more than the fact that she is his mother, he boasts in the fact that she is faithful to the Lord. That is what she boasts in. Just like David, Mary boasts in the fact that she is faithful to the Lord. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to your word. That is her boast 
I am the handmaid of the Lord. That is my relationship with God. And that is what we are meant to boast in. Today what we hold on to is not our position. It makes no difference to the Lord. Today what we hold on to is not our status. It makes no position. It makes no difference to the Lord. What we hold on to and what we boast about is our relationship with God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 31, we read. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, verse 31. It is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Let the one who boasts, let them boast in the Lord. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 23. Thus says the Lord, do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those who boast, boast in this, that they understand and know me that I am the Lord. Let them boast in the fact that they understand and they know me. That is what our boast should be. That is where we look at Jesus and we share that relationship with the Lord. That is where the Lord shares that relationship with us. Not in what we have achieved, what we've done, not even what we have done for him. But our boast is in the sole factor that I'm faithful to my Lord today. It doesn't matter what I've done before, that I'm faithful to my Lord today. As the Lord said, who is my mother, who is my brother, who is my sister? Not what position they held in their yesterday. What are they to me today? How faithful are they to me today? Because that is when I share a relationship with them. It is always the today and now. What relationship do you and I share with Jesus today? Because that is what he looks at. For the Lord, there is no past, there is no future. There's always only a present. He is not restricted by time and by space. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He has no past, he has no future. Everything is about the today and now. And in the today and now, he's asking us, come, what relationship do you share with me today? Because that is your status. That is your position. That is your symbol, that is your boast. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. In the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 17. Let the one who boasts, let them boast in the Lord. Psalm 34, verse 2. Psalm 34, verse 2. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. That is my boast that I'm in the Lord, that I'm with Jesus. Psalm 20, verse 7. Psalm 20, verse 7. Some take pride in chariots. Some take pride in their horses. But our pride, it is in the name of the Lord our God. And therefore, there is, no, there is nothing to boast of from this world in the presence of God. Like it says in the scriptures, when the Pharisee and the tax collector were there in front of the altar, the tax collector puts his head down. The Pharisee looks and he tells the Lord, thank God I'm not like this tax collector. But who does the Lord justify? Who does the Lord exalt? The tax collector who bent down and looked at God and said, I'm not worthy to be here in your presence. There is a relationship. He has nothing to boast about, about his material wealth, his worldly status, his symbol. He goes and shares a relationship of love and faithfulness with his God. What do we share today? Or are we looking at our position and what we've achieved, be it even our spirituality. And that is why so beautifully said in the letter to the Galatians, chapter 6, verse 14. 
letter to the Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. And this is St. This is Paul speaking, who a person who had a lot to boast about, as he himself would say, if there's a person who can boast, it is me in the credentials that I have. A Jew, I'm learned, I've been under Galileo, the position he held but he says it's nothing and that is why we would read Galatians 3 verse 28 Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 the word says therefore there is no longer Jew or Greek there is no longer slave or free there is no longer male or female for all of you are one in Christ Jesus your position, what you are, is based on what you are with Jesus. And that is what we are meant to look at. That is what we are meant to desire. That is why the Lord would be upset with those Pharisees and the Jews who claimed about their history, about what, we, what they are as Abraham's children in Matthew chapter 3 verse 9. He says, from verse 8, he says, bear fruit worthy of repentance. When many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees were coming to him, he looked and he told them, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. Don't hold on to your ancestral lineage and then come to me, says the Lord. We could be traditional Christians. We could be Christians from, from generations and generations. I belong to the Syro Malabar rite. We pride ourselves in being St. Thomas Christians. Whenever we get an opportunity, we see to it that we make known to everyone that we come down as direct descendants of St. Thomas. But the Lord would look at us and say, Don't say. Don't speak to me about your ancestral lineage. What are you to me today? What is your relationship with me today? Where is your faithfulness to me today? Dear brothers and sisters, we can't stand in the presence of the Lord and tell him, do you know who I am? He's not bothered with who we are because of what we've achieved in this world. The world might be impressed. But the Lord's not going to be impressed. I could claim to be a director and the world might give me respect for it. People who come to the center might give me respect for it. For the Lord, it doesn't make a difference. I will have to stand eye to eye, face to face in the presence of my God. And he will ask me every day. Today, how faithful have you been to me? Today, what is our relationship? Let us ask the Lord to give us the grace to be able to be faithful to him today. The relationship we share with him, a relationship of love and a relationship of faithfulness. Let's close our eyes in prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you have permitted us to come into your presence. O oh Lord, we have nothing to boast about. We are unworthy. We do not come into your presence with our credentials, with our credibilities, with our worldly acknowledgements and status and symbols. Lord, but we come here as the tax collector came, with a heart of humility and a head bowed down in prayer, crying out to you and saying, Lord, have mercy. And like David, I do not look at my status, my position that I've held in this world, but I rejoice in the fact that I share a relationship with you. And that is where my heart dances with joy. 
Give me the grace, O Father in heaven, to be ever faithful to you, that when the time comes, and when you appear in all your glory, you will find me worthy of being your servant, faithful unto you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all.